that obviously if there's like days on end of rain is going to be an issue. We have talked about using propane, but that's even more illegal and that's one thing the cops said they won't put up with. Um, they will raid, so if we do do propane, it'll be on the DL. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about all I have on that. But. Sure. And so, <laughs> so far, no, no concerns about the cops coming in and tearing everything down? That's a concern all the time. We get told we're going to get raided all the time, and so far it hasn't happened. I think partly because it's an election year, Obama like doesn't want that on his, you know. I think we're in a weird place here in D.C. Um, because of that, and also we're in a federal park. So it directly would come from Obama because it's not a city issue, it's a federal issue. Mm. And I think in a weird way that saved our <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, um, So yeah, I don't think, the only thing that, the only possibility is if we do have like a disease breakout, that will be like a tuberculosis stop break or something like that, which there's a clinic that comes around and tests people and we have a medic tent and we have a dental tent too. Wow. We have a, a dentist who comes and does uh, free dental work and stuff. And if it's something major, she'll take you back to your office to do it. So, That's awesome. Yeah, pretty cool. So, um, yeah. What were you doing before Occupy happened? I'm a hairdresser. That's what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and actually, I've been cutting hair in the park, and we're about to build a barber tent for me. So. Awesome. So, uh, was this, like, when you see yourself now as, as a part of Occupy, and you look back at yourself before Occupy happened, do you just see yourself as the same person, but in a, in a in a different situation, or has it changed you? Oh, it's. I think it's changed me for sure. It's definitely s stretched my emotional and mental parameters as a as an individual. Um, plus, I learned a lot about politics. I thought I knew a lot, and then I came here and realized I didn't know anything about politics. So, um, I've learned a lot just and about unions and just about how things run in general. It's been a real education being here mm. on many levels many levels yeah it's definitely expanded my horizons mm. great where can I where can I go, go grab a, something to drink water tea anything I know you're setting up a tea thing you mean so. in town like right now here in right Occupy. here um there's a drinking fountain where I get all of my water from which they're gonna turn off in a week so that's another issue because it the pipes freeze so I don't know we're working on a way to get water delivered here mm -hmm. every week well that's that's doable right I mean because, I think so because Occupy the website you guys, you get tons of We get Twitter needs. Yeah, we Twitter our needs, and whatever we need usually gets delivered here. And water is, like, an essential, like, so I'm sure that's not going to be an issue. What might be an issue is it might be more inconvenient, like when you want to brush your teeth or something, right. like, or wash your hands. It's, that's going to be more of an issue. We'll figure something out. Yeah. We always do. Um, also, they, use, they have been setting up hot water, and, like, you can get coffee and tea, but it's sporadic, so that's why we're trying to make this happen, so that no matter what, you can get hot water. And okay. Like that. Great. Sorry. There's no hot water. And how about you? What have you been doing with the, the Occupy movement? Oh, oh, well, I'm a sleeper. I've been sleeping here probably since October 8th, I think it is when I came here. Uh, hey. <laughs> well, yeah, I came here from Chicago. Um, mainly, well, um, I'm not really active in any committees right now. I was trying to get active in the uh, legal team, and okay. I was helping. Occupy has two seats, right? Yeah. 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 I was, like, getting active with the legal committee to, like, try and teach people know your rights. Uh, legal observation and all that, and street teaming. Uh, so that's kind of more what I've been involved with. <laughs> but yeah, most, for the most part, uh, I've just been participating in a lot of the marches and everything and helping out. And mainly, I guess, with legal observation, I mean, I usually carry a sign and a pen. Like, I carry just one of the regular signs, and then I always write down the officers' names and badge numbers in case anything happens, usually. Were you a part of Occupy Chicago before you came here? No, I was not. I wished I had a chance to go visit them, but I haven't had the time to. So I probably will for Christmas, and hopefully, because I have to go back to Chinatown for Christmas, so I'm hoping to go back down and just spend uh, Christmas there with Occupy Chicago. This seems to be one of the uh, one of the, the few major city occupies movements that are still intact. Yeah, we have never been raided yet, which is probably a big reason why it's still intact and it just keeps growing. We actually have two locations. I mean, that's here in Freedom Plaza, though we start out separately, um, and we got like different 
forms of our society, I guess. Right. So I like, just think of these low communities, low colonies. Our societies are different, and our governmental structure is different. We're more horizontal, with like leaderless. It's just participatory mainly on your own. Whereas they have leaders up at Freedom Plaza, and they have people that like kind of run the show and start it all. And like they already planned all the stuff already beforehand. Whereas we kind of built our own community here. We didn't come here with any plans. It's just it slowly it slowly grew on its own. And slowly, more and more, as more and more people came, we built this stuff together. We built the community together. Whereas Freedom Plaza didn't really have that. And it was already kind of built for them. Yeah. yeah, Freedom Plaza had like a steering committee of 50 people that were paid to start the, that movement. It was, it was like, it was like um, professional activists who started that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the thing is, they're like all the people at Freedom Plaza, they're older, they've known each other for years, and they've done a lot of the. Uh, protests and pro like anti-war protests and all that for years whereas here a lot of people you ask them how many pro this is for the people sleeping here you ask them how many protests have you been to before this it's their first time this occupying is their first protest it's the first time they've ever done this and it's just because we're just so involved into the movement it's not like a hobby or anything it's because we're actually we want something to get done we want change and, you know, Obama came in in 08, he promised, like, hope and change, but we can't rely on someone to bring us change, we have to do it ourselves, and that's what, why we're here. Looking back on the 08 election, um, just looking at it realistically, you have a corporate candidate who received the most amount of money in history uh, in his campaign, won an award from a company that beating, he beat out uh, Nike, Coors, Apple in the process, uh, so a very, very corporate candidate to the T, but his policy and his rhetoric not congruent to one another but people seem to believe in the rhetoric do you think that anyone has learned from that since that time um i think um well i guess they learned that you can't trust well at least for me I, me personally i've learned you can't trust politics you can't trust the you cannot trust politicians if you actually want something to get done you have to do it yourself you cannot rely on anyone else to do it for you you cannot rely on a single person or obama for instance to say end the wars on his own. We, he can't do that. We have to push for it. We have to be the motivation to stop it. We can't rely on someone else to do it for us. Mm -hmm. Even if he is the president, we can't rely on him. He doesn't do anything. So do you think maybe uh, there was an element of naivete in assuming that electing this certain Democrat, that everything would change, and then having reality kind of crash down has made everyone a little bit more ang uh, angst-filled and a little bit more desirous of change? I think it has for the youth people here, because like the young people were the ones who mainly like vote for Obama, had their hopes in him, because we didn't trust you know a lot of other politicians, but we didn't trust Bush, we don't trust a lot of other congressmen, but he like brought us hope, and then it just kind of all came crashing down, you know? You get your ho hopes built up and built up, and then it's just reality check, and nothing right. happens. Nothing that he promised for, nothing came. So do you find yourself uh, staying staying aware of politics now or do you find yourself just just disengaging from it and doing the actual work of democracy here um i was very engaged i was more active in learning about politics before i came here just because of the internet but since i came here i haven't had internet access at all so i've kind of just been reading the newspaper and mainly just reading the newspapers i guess is all i've gotten and just from word of mouth is the only politics i get but here i've been probably more engaged into the community and community building here as well to try and keep the occupation going i mean i know why i'm here and that's what keeps me motivated. I know why I'm here. It's the corporate corruption, corporate greed. It's because um, our politics are based, are bought off. We, the people do not have a say in what goes on in our country. Only the people with money do. And we need a system. We need a new system where money doesn't talk, people talk. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm here. What's your name? I'm Adrian. Adrian. I'm Isaac. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What was your name? Annika. Annika. Isaac. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for talking. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Isaac. Okay, I'm Doug Stewart, man. Doug. I'm from the state of Ohio, no, man. Uh, no, I'm gonna ignore you because you know I'm I gotta get back, my buddy. plug in. Did yeah, man, I'm from I'm right? from the state of Ohio, yeah. and I was the best athlete in Ohio at one time. I got burned, kicked gasoline that was on fire by another black kid when I was eight years old and he was 14. He did it because he couldn't beat me up. He could still beat my older brother up, but he couldn't beat me up. And this is a majorly white community, white side of Ohio, where they had many white friends, lived with, we socialized, with no racism amongst me and the children. But a lot of the adults I didn't know that were white were racist. 
and all the bad black people that I knew didn't mess around with the good church people because we fought the black people, the bad black people. But they didn't fight the racist white people. What part of Ohio was this? Right outside of Columbus. Okay. Ohio State Buckeyes, outside of Columbus. 